Hi guys, Tech James here. In this video, I will show you guys how to set up the PS Vita dock and stream your PS Vita screen to your PC. So this is actually some brand new software. It hasn't been around for that long and it's really nice and simple and it's actually pretty cool. So you might remember a while ago, I did kind of a similar thing, but using OBS. It was a lot harder to set up and there's just quite a lot of errors you could encounter. This one is a lot more simple, but it is just this one problem. It does have these strange lines which kind of go up and down the screen. Now, originally I thought this was like an error um, with my PS Vita, but it turns out it's just an error um, with the whole program. So maybe this will be updated. I'm gonna make the video now because it's a brand new thing. So I might as well be one of the first to make a video on it. But yeah, I just wanted to mention this because um, I don't wanna get complaints saying it like doesn't work or anything. So yeah, just a warning you do get these lines um, going up and down on the screen which I will show you it's not too bad but it can be a bit annoying um, but I'll show you what it looks like um, once I get this thing set up so there will be two links in the description of this video the first one will be the PSV to docs software it's on github so if you guys go to this link and you want to download the zip file so we're just going to click on this right here it's going to take us to this page. Version 2.2 was updated three hours ago and it's got the ability to take screenshots of the space key. So that's pretty cool. But we are going to download this zip file right here. So just click on it and it's just going to begin downloading. Shouldn't take long, just give it 10 seconds. Okay, so once that has finished downloading, we want to go to the second link in the description. This is the plugin that we will need for our PS Vita. You might already have this plugin installed. It's the UDCD USB video plugin. Um, so we want to scroll down and we just want to get the SKPRX file. So we're just going to click on this. I'm pretty sure it's on Google Drive. Here we go. And we can just click on the blue download button. Okay, so once these things have finished downloading, we can go to our PCs downloads folder and find both of the files we have got here. With the PS Vita doc zip file, we want to right click and we want to select extract to PS Vita doc version 2.2. It's then just going to put it in its own file folder and we can just delete the zip file. Next, we will need to copy this SKPRX file over to our PS Vita. Alright guys, so very quickly on your PS Vita, we're just going to open up Vita Shell because we need to connect our PS Vita to our PC so we can copy across the plugin. So let's just press select, connect it up via USB and I'll be back once it's copied across. So we are just going to drag and drop it on the route for now and we can change the location of it actually over on our PlayStation Vita. So let's just head over to it now and I'll show you guys where to put this SKPRX file. Okay, so now it's on there. Let's put it into the correct folder. So we're going to go onto our UXO and we're going to scroll all the way down and let's look for the SKPRX file. Here it is. We're going to press triangle and then we're going to go down to copy and press X. The file is now copied. Now we're looking for the TAI folder. This could be on your URO or on your UXO, but it depends what one has the config.txt in. For me, mine's on the UXO, so I'm going to press X. Here it is, just the basic config.txt. I'm going to do triangle and then just paste at the top. Now once it's pasted in here just like that, go up to config.txt and press X. Go down to kernel and just do right on the D-pad and I'll go in to enter your new line of text. Okay, so I just typed it in. This is exactly what you want to enter. So UXO or URO, depending where your tie folder is located, dot dot TI slash UDCD underscore UVC dot SKPRX. Once you've got that exactly in, you can pause the video, copy it down. Just click the small white arrow down here. Now we can press circle to go back. We'll ask you to save, press X for yes. Go back again by pressing circle. And now we just need to press on start. We need to scroll down to where it says reboot and press on X. Now my PS Vita has rebooted. Let's just open up the HNCAR update real quick. I do not have it permanent, so I will need to just run this again quickly. But I do have QCOS, so it will close straight away. Now we need to set it up with our computer. So to get the audio working, you will need something like this. What this is, is just an audio to audio jack, 
and you will need to plug this into the PS Vita speaker port and then into the blue line in port at the back of your computer. So you could be using a desktop or a laptop. I'm using a desktop and this will plug into the blue one at the back. I did try it on the front and it just didn't seem to work. So um, the back one, which on the motherboard, um, that's the one that works. You will also need your USB cable. You will connect it via USB, then just plug it into your computer and then it will start up. But I would recommend um, having an application open. It can literally be anything. Uh, maybe just open up Vita Shell and then you can plug it in just so it doesn't try to connect um, via the um, content manager. So it won't say that please wait glitch. So what we're going to do, let's plug these in, then let's plug it into our computer. So let's just plug the USB in first, just like that. And now we just need to plug in the um, audio into the audio jack. Now let's just get both of these and let's plug this into my desktop. Right guys, so now we're back on our computer. We've got our PlayStation Vita plugged in via USB and we have got our audio cable plugged into the PlayStation Vita and our PC as well. Now you don't actually need the audio cable, it's entirely up to you, but we're going to go into the PS Vita dock folder, double click it, and we want to double click the PS Vita dock.exe. So let's just double click onto this. And this thing was actually designed with Unity, so that is pretty cool. Just give it a few seconds to load up. And there you go guys, we're in Vita Shell. Uh, we can just close out of this real quick. And there you go, it is completely um, mirrored onto our computer. So those are the lines I was talking about, just green and purple lines that go down the screen. I'm not quite sure why it does that. It also has a small piece of text, um, which I can't quite read because it's going really fast. Um, but yeah, it's a bit weird. Now, to get the sound working, what we actually want to do is where it has your headphones down here, you want to right click on it, then just simply click on sounds. Once that comes up, you need to go to recording at the top, scroll down and we're looking for line in. Click on this, now click on properties. Go to listen at the top and click on that. And now you want to tick listen to this device. Also make sure your headphones are selected um, or speakers or whatever you're using to listen to the audio through. So now you can click on apply and OK. And now we should be able to hear our PS Vita's sounds. So what we're going to do, just click on OK on this. Now once we're back on the GitHub, we can actually find out some stuff, so there's shortcuts. So we've got the return key, shows up in options menu, escape, full screen, um, all windowed, um, tab, and it changes the quality from HD to smooth. So we can try all this stuff out right now. Um, let's just try tab, so we can press this, and you can see it's gonna change the quality, so we've got good. Um, is that HQ, not quite sure that is. And then we've got smooth. I would recommend smooth. Um, maybe smooth looks the best. It's really up to you what you want to choose. Um, they all pretty much look all right, I guess. But yeah, I'm going to keep it on the smooth one. It just seems to act a lot smoother with a lot less lag. So we've also got escape. We can press this, full screen mode. But because it's a PS Vita, it's going to be a bit stretched, um, depending on what monitor you've got, actually. So if we just press escape again, I prefer to play it in kind of a windowed mode anyway, just so it's not too big and pixelated. Now there was something else. We've also got return, and this will show up an options menu. So if we go onto it, press return. We've got an options menu in here. We can use the mouse. Um, so we've got some weird stuff like sharpness, um, yes or no. Um, we can press return to go back. So there you go, we can turn sharpness on or off. I quite like sharpness on, so I'll keep that like that. Retro style. Um, this one just looks a bit weird. Maybe if you're playing a retro game, that might be quite cool. Um, we've got some audio, graphics, you guys get the idea. And you can just press return to go back. Um, there's also a new feature. If you press the space bar, it will take a screenshot for you. So that is actually pretty cool. So I think what we're going to do now, um, the sound should be working. Um, you can always turn it up on your PS Vita if you're not getting any sound. But let's go ahead and just test out a quick game. This does work with homebrew games, but we're just going to play some Adventure Time. So here the gameplay is really good. I'm not really getting any lag or anything like that. Um, but as you can see, the lines do get a bit annoying. The graphics is actually pretty playable. It doesn't really annoy me too much. But um, yeah, apart from the lines, everything seems to be good. Audio is good, graphics is good, and there's not really any delay or anything. I could play this happily. So that is pretty much it for this video. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.